Oh my God. The blood pump is so bad. Ow. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not allowed to have energy drinks before I work out. It has natural, natural caffeine, boosts metabolism. It restricts the blood vessels. Can I have a donut? We got to show you guys the donuts that just arrived here. How long have they been there? They've been there. All day? Yeah. So I still have one. Quite some time. Since 8 a.m. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We are back at Fit Club with Andy. This week is week two of my builds. I'd like to say I'm feeling great, to be brutally honest. In my last video with Jen, if you guys didn't watch the QA video, watch the QA video. I talked about how I often don't feel motivated to be here. Yeah, I can tell because you're wearing pants. So that means she doesn't want to get newbied, which is We're fine. not going to be electrocuted We're not get today. Extra today, it's fine. <laughs> but we will have a moderate workout at best. We have lots of other videos with the new fit. If you guys want to see me get electrocuted, you guys can watch those videos. Today is going to be a non new fit glute session. Yes. We're going to work hard. Do I look excited? How excited do I look? Yeah, super I think we're also going to talk a little bit about mistakes that women make when trying to build muscle in their training, it's particularly over 40 in their builds. In their builds. In their builds. Yes. We'll just cover the fitness side of things today. Yep. Okay, so if you guys are interested in that, keep watching. Let's go. Okay. So what we're going to do for this glute and hamstring workout is we're going to start out with lying leg curls. She's going to go pretty heavy. Every set we're going up two plates and then we'll work up to two hard working sets. Then we're going to move on to single leg leg press glute focus and then move on to step ups and then heel elevator reverse lunges see where your energy is from there and then we'll either do glute ham raise or do nordics we can do nordics yeah. if i have anything left in the yeah, tank we can do nordics. all right here we go two seven eight thirteen 14, keep going. 15, I'm spotting you for five. This edge, this is this looks heavy, but this is technically her high rep set. Four, we're gonna go heavier after this. Three, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Two, keep your butt down, thrust in the pad, and then I'll help you up. One more, all the way up, 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 up. Now you see she can't get any more, so she's gonna thrust in the pad, and I'm gonna guide her. You can only do this with the spot. There we go for a full rep, perfect. That's what I like about lying hamstring curls. If you have either a spotter or a trainer with you, at those end reps, it's natural that your butt lifts up. There's no way to get around it when you're struggling, but if you have somebody behind you, you can thrust in the pad, squeeze your butt, so make your butt look as tiny as possible, and then have your spotter take your shoes or the pad and kind of guide you and take off 20, 30 pounds off the set to help you finish it. Two. Three. <laughs> Six, up, 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 good. Eight, squeeze. Two more. Squeeze. One more. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hold it, hold it. Resist me, resist me, resist. Resist, resist, resist. Give me some partials right there at the bottom part. One, two, three, four, baby. Five. Six, squeeze the left one more. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Done. Ow. Slowly dying. I prefer to go shoeless on the single leg, but if you want to keep your shoes on, do it. Because the whole idea is I just really want you to put that pressure on that whole outer foot right there and try to have that knee like go right past the chest. I like right when I'm about to tap my other knee. So that one knee is bent. How deep you want to go is kind of like coming in contact with that left knee. Yep. Two. Let's get eight on each side and then we'll go up. Three. Drag it, drag it, hip, hip, hip. Four. Drag, drag, drag. Go right there. Three. Yep. Four. Seven, drive hard on that. Yep, you can try lifting the toes up and driving really with the heel. Let's see if we get more. There. Good, that's Eight. good. I'm just gonna set this stuff right by you. I don't need the energy drink. Ready? Yep. All right, so the single leg leg press is mostly glute focused. She's putting most of her pressure on the outer part of her foot. 
You can see she's overemphasizing, kind of driving with the heel and not letting the weight crash on her. She's actually pulling the weight with her hip flexor. So she's bringing the weight towards her. She's not letting the weight take control. She's controlling the weight. And we're gonna shoot for like uh, 12 repetitions here. Dick, what do you want, six? I wasn't counting. Okay, so Let's seven. go with six, six sounds good. Okay, yep. Pull, pull, pull it towards you. See that brief pause that she's doing, letting the glute take the load, 11. Dragging it, feeling some hamstrings right here. 12, we got three. Let's get three. Drive hard, drive hard, heel, heel, heel. Good, Swat. Just match your foot with the other foot. So that's your gauge. Her knee is going slightly past her chest. Drive, one, yep. Four, biggest mistake with this exercise, five is when people press and they do single leg, they stop right at their chest and they stop by their rib cage and they feel it all in the quads. But Oh, three. Glutes, glutes, glutes. Two. One more, one more, one more. Drive. Good, rack. Beautiful. I don't any quads. No quads, yep, no. But you can see why she doesn't feel quad. A lot of people, like I said, they'll do a single leg leg press and they'll stop where their rib cage is and then they're pressing up with a lot of their BMO, a lot of their front quads, they stop right there. As you can see, Vic opens her hip a little bit, starts putting a lot of the pressure, still flat foot. You can't see it to the naked eye, but she's putting a lot of the pressure and driving a lot with the outer part of her foot and mainly that end part of her heel and going right past the chest, almost like you're trying to take your knee and knead it to the shoulder and then she's pressing. So it really throws the quads in the back seat. All right, here we go. One, drag it, yep, find that connection, find that connection. Yep, Vic is feeling the glute. She's, she's in the groove, seven. She's keeping her hand there so she doesn't lose tension. Eight, let's get two more, Vic. Drive hard, heel, 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 nine. One more. Drive, and 10, good, okay, good. Yep, a little quad on that last two. It's okay, a little quad never hurt anybody. Here we go, one. Feel that groove right in here, right in here. One more, Vic, here we go. Big rep, big rep here. Drive, drive, drive. You got it, you got it. Rack it. Beautiful. 150. I saw this meme. It said body type. Looks like I work out. And you can tell I don't say no when someone offers me a cookie. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Fluffy big. So, in your opinion, what's the most common mistake that you think women make in the gym when they're trying to build muscle? Focusing too much on weight, like how much weight they're lifting. But everyone says like, you gotta go heavier, you gotta go heavier. Heavier is relative. So if you compare two women and you compare someone five foot three and then someone five foot seven and you put them on bicep curls, usually the five foot three woman will have smaller insertion points on their arms and she'll be able to curl more than the woman at five foot seven that has longer arms, okay? So just because she's curling more than the other woman doesn't mean she's gonna build more muscle than them. It's all relatives. I don't wanna overcomplicate it, but whatever is heavy for you, you figure out that. So if your coach gives you a workout plan and this is your baseline, you run through the workout plan for a week or two, you find your baseline of weight where you're actually fatiguing and you're hitting failure. That's your baseline is individual to every different athlete is individual to every different athlete and then you go up from there so you go to progress from there example you're doing squats with 100 pounds your first week you did 12 reps and that 12th rep was a good amount of struggle but you probably had a couple more reps in the tank next week you hit 15 and 15 that last rep that 15th rep you're like this and you can barely get it up Okay, you're about at failure. That is your max for that amount of repetitions and just build from that. So it's hard to say like, oh, you're gonna grow muscle if you squat 185. That's not true. I'm sure you've seen Jenna Geary in, in Vic's videos. There's exercises that Jen is a lot stronger in than Vic. And then there's exercises that Vic is a lot stronger in than Jen. Does it mean Vic has more muscle than Jen or vice versa? No. It People confuse strength 
with muscle size. Yes. So yes. strength training and hypertrophy training are different. Yes. And I think to the novice person scrolling on Instagram, it all gets kind of mixed together. Yes. The message is, yeah, don't lift pink dumbbells for the rest of your life. Yes. But to say, how much more do I have to lift to build muscle size? It's, it, it's not than, even about that. Yeah, exactly. There's not a number on it. There's multiple ways to build muscle. The three ways to build muscle. One, increase the reps that you were doing before with the same weight. Two, increase the weight from the the same exercise that you were doing before or increase the time under tension than what you're doing before. So if you were curling 20 pounds and you were going two seconds down and then the next week curled the same amount of weight and you got the same amount of reps as the week before, but you did, instead of lowering it with two seconds, you lowered it for three seconds. That's progression because lowering the weight slowly makes the weight harder. So if yeah. you're matching the reps from the week before, you're progressing. Or if you did 20 pound curls for 10 reps and the next week you did 20 pound curls for 11 reps, that's how you build muscle. You keep building from that. And if every week you went up a rep, if you're bench one up five pounds every single week. Which that, wouldn't you, happen. Which wouldn't happen, yeah. but you would have a world record bench. Yeah. Just small progressions. But make then making it hard, it hard yes. somehow. And yes. usually for most people who aren't beginners, increasing the weight is yes. usually the biggest thing, form and weight. Intermediate people or advanced, it's not even about weight at all. Yeah. And I think also it's a blessing and a curve. We have so much information now in our fingertips with Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, that we're over complicating it. If you look at all unbelievable physiques, male and female in the 70s, 80s and 90s, they didn't record anything. They just went into the gym. They knew they're like, okay, today is glute day. I am just going to train my glutes as hard as possible. And they just did that every week. And they built world-class physiques. They just made it hard and yeah. they struggled and they had a workout partner and they would either like fit this 15, I'm doing 16. You know, they just motivated each other or just motivated motivated themselves by just putting in the work. iPhones didn't exist then, but they weren't looking at their phone or looking at their sheet like, oh, I got to hit this rep for this rep and I yeah. beat next week. You can do that. That's another way of progressing. But I'm just saying for a beginner, I just wouldn't overcomplicate it. I would just go in the gym and just work your butt off. We'll work my butt off yeah, right now. Exactly. So you're here coming up. So when you go down, I feel more glutes when my back foot is skimming the box. Give me up, drive. You got some big glutes. How much do you hip thrust? <laughs> Less than you. <laughs> Bring that foot completely straight though. Straighten that foot. There we go. Okay, push off right here, okay? Here we go. Up. Okay, that toe kind of skimmed that box. Two, four. Five. Eight. We make it harder. Don't even put your foot all the way on the ground. Just right there and then pop it up. Nine. So kind of just like hover. Use this and then hover. Ten. Down, down, down. Right there. Come back up. Twelve. Fifteen. Swat. One. Nine. Okay, let's start hovering, okay? Ten. Barely tap. Yep. 15. Good. We can do a dumbbell. Great at resistance. I mean, I can keep my balance. This is hardcore, dude. Cool. Warm them up for me. All right, here we go. Boom. And then I want that hip. Boom. Okay. Really drive heel to hammer. There we go. Two. Really hard. Three. Now slow negative. Six. Let's turn your body this way a little bit. Nine. There we go. Slow, slow, slow. Pop it right back up. Eleven. One. Non-stop tension on these. Make them harder than the last set. Twelve. One more. Slow, slow, slow. Up, 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 up. Now go down to a negative. Slow, negative. Slow, slow, slow. Good. One more side and we're done. Oh, it's at one sixty. How much do these weigh? Thirty pounds each or something like that. Yeah, sixty pounds. Oh, boom, yep, three. Tension, 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 pop it up, five. Eight. Five more and you're done. Five. You got it, Vic. Four, pop it up. Yep, down, tension, tension, tension. Three. <sighs> down. Two. <sighs> One more, last set. <sighs> One, drop them. <sighs> 
purpose. So this is You'll pretty much keep that up. You'll watch your physique how I am after week. almost every working set. Heart rate got up to 170 on that last one. So I'm just going to be down here for a couple minutes. Oh my God. The blood pump is so bad. I would probably put your shoes on for this. Okay. Just you have good grip. I mean, you don't have to. But. So I used to associate a good workout with sweating a lot. And ironically, I actually barely sweat anymore. I, I a lot was, of I, women associate a good workout with sweating a lot. Yeah, not necessary. You sweat a lot. Yeah, I'm a sweater, but I, I, I also have this. super oily well, you've been skin. Treating me. Three years, yeah, you don't sweat that much. I used to drip sweat when I did. You don't work that hard. When I did my leg workout yeah. back in the day. It's also, I'm fatter than you, so I actually Because <laughs> I think it's a really common thing for women who are over 40 to associate sweating with a good workout because that was like what was promoted. Like I used to do like Tai Bo classes or like body pump or something and you do it's like cardio with weights yeah. so you sweat a lot so a lot of women think it's not a good workout if you don't sweat a lot and i feel like in my older wiser years as an athlete i actually go off my heart rate i think that's better a lot more yeah if you go through a hard set if the muscles under tension for 30 plus seconds everybody's heart rate is different like a woman 115 pounds mm -hmm. is going to have a way less heart rate spike than you you know but yeah if your heart rate is spiking and it's considerably higher yeah yeah so a really good set i think my heart rate gets up between like 150 and 170 after the working sets and then i just keep an eye on it and when it gets down under like 130 maybe 120 that's when i feel like i'm ready to go again so for me that could be two minutes later in the workout it could be five minutes i think that's also a good point not always necessary to have like how much time should i rest between sets depending on what you're training for like yeah timed rest periods are needed depending on like if you're training for a specific sport if it's an endurance if you're just focusing straight on strength like yeah. and progression like you want to go back when you're ready yeah i see too many people they don't go intense enough because after the set they're like dancing if you have to dance in between sets, you're probably not doing a working set. It's gonna put it out there. That's gonna trigger some people. I, that might trigger a few people, but I'm just being honest. Yeah. We can be friends if you like honesty and the truth. I agree. All right, let's do this. All right, here we go. Tell me if that platform is okay, if I need to move it up more or move it down. Should I scoot it forward a little bit? No. Are you sure? Your heel. Feel good? Yeah. Three, okay. Does it look okay? Four, yep. I'll scoot it up a little bit next set. Five, six, I want that tension right back down. Seven, drive, right back down. Eight, drive up, right back down. Nine, drive up, down. 10, drive up, give me five. Two, one more, and swap. One. Then up all the way, all the way. Four. Gonna fully shorten that glute. Five. Nine. Ten. Two. Big chest, big chest. One more. Rack. Hard heel drive. Yep. You stand straight up like a step up. Four. Contraction is crazy on this. You got 12, Dick. You got 12. 11. One more. Zig, zig, zig. And stand straight up. 12. Swap. Woo! Stand straight up. Chest up. Ten. Good. Yep. Sit straight up. Two more. Strong steps. Strong steps. One more. One more. One more. Strong, strong, strong. Rack. To wrap. You want to do a Nordic curl? No, you're good. All right, so this is me wrapping it up. Thanks, Diane. Great workout. Quick overview. We started with three strong sets, two heavy, heavy sets of lying leg curl, and one high rep, 20 rep set of lying leg curl, moving on to single leg leg press, onto the weighted step up, and then went right to the uh, reverse lunge. So four exercises, super hard, and that's all we needed to do. And she's telling Another common mistake. What? 60 seconds. Tell me about how many exercises you need to do to get a good workout. Um, it all depends how much intensity you want to put in the oh exercise. My, I can't even sit any longer. Not one right answer. For legs, you can do 
one exercise and just do squats and that can be enough. You know what I mean, Vic? Yeah, you need some variety. Yeah. You gotta hit everything from different angles, but you don't need to do nine exercises to get a good workout. No, no. I would say we usually do four to five. We have done a three exercise quad workout before. If you wanna talk about glutes, you'd like an exercise where it lengthens the glute, shortens the glute. So you want like one hip hinge, one press, and then one isolation movement for a complete glute workout. So if you wanted like a quick, easy glute workout laid out, a beginner start out with a hip thrust, you're working the glute in a shortened position. Then an RDL, you're working the glute in a lengthened position, and then some form of like a press or a lunge. Knee flexion. Yeah, knee right. flexion, okay. Leg press, lunge, squat. Yeah. I'm wiped for exercises. It was good, it was really good. It was good. All right, hope you guys like this workout. Be sure to comment, subscribe, share, all the buttons, and we'll see you guys next time.